Hi there, this is Alex from 3D Chimera. Today I'm going to show you guys how to import an STL right into SolidWorks. So a lot of times our customers bump into this uh, if they're working with 3D scan data. It's kind of the most common use case. Um, so I'm just going right here on our uh, 3D scan page at shop3dchimera.com. If we scroll down here a little bit, you can see some examples of things we've scanned in the past. Um, but we have some examples of our deliverables here. So uh, the first is going to be raw scan data right out of a 3D scanner. It's going to have some noise and some holes in it, maybe some smoothing that needs to be done on the mesh. Um, that's what you're going to get right out of a scanner. And that's going to be for any scanner, whether it's a real high-end scanner or low-end scanner, there's always going to be a cleanup process. Um, once you clean it up, you're going to get what we consider a uh, watertight STL. Now, this is going to be similar to like an STL that you would create out of a CAD system. Um, it's going to have a uh, single shell and, you know, all the data is going to be there looking nice and tidy. Um, and that's really what we're looking for. Now, um, you know, historically, a lot of our customers ask us to deliver a step file. We absolutely can do that. We have two ways to do that. We can straight up reverse engineer it in a tool like SolidWorks um, or maybe ANSYS, base claim. Um, or we can create like a patch network surface. We use a tool here called uh, Quick Surface to do that. That works fantastic. So there's different tools that we have in order to uh, convert an STL to an actual step file that you can open in CAD. But if you've got SolidWorks, um, I think anything after 2018, um, you'll be able to do that. So um, we're going to go jump right into SolidWorks 2020 in a moment. But first, I want to show you this STL. So uh, this is our STL here. You know, it looks nice and clean. We can kind of spin it around, uh, run a quick analysis on this guy. We can see here, it's important to kind of take a look over here on the side. Under shells, it says we have a single shell. We do have about 380,000 triangles, which is actually a lot of triangles. It would be fine for us to kind of uh, cut that down. But that's okay. Um, I think SolidWorks can handle that. And um, we'll see what we can do here. So we'll pop open SolidWorks. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say File Open. Uh, let me find my file here. All right, perfect. So... Before we hit open here, what we want to do is we want to go in and make sure that we're looking at the right type of data. So uh, we're going to look for mesh files, and we want to click on options. Now, this is going to come up and give you a couple different options here. You have the ability to import as a solid body, as a surface body, or as a graphics body. So graphics body, if you have these things unselected, you can have this. This is actually the default setting. So you normally import an STL. It's going to come in as a graphics body. And if you've ever done this before, you know you can't click on anything, you can't touch anything, it's pretty useless. So um, we always try to go for a solid body, and we want to make sure that um, we can kind of group everything together there. So we're going to give that a shot. So we say OK. And then we'll go ahead and import this particular part. Now there is a, quite a bit of triangles here, so it's going to take a moment to process through the data. Um, but it's going to make it so that we can work with the STL data in SolidWorks. So we'll give this just a second to process on through here. Now, one thing you'll notice up in my uh, ribbon here in the top is that I have a tab called Mesh Modeling Open. We're going to get to that in a moment, but if you don't have that, you're going to want to right-click here, go to Tabs, and make sure that you select Mesh Modeling. That's going to give you the tools that we need to work with, um, with the STL that was imported. So you can see here under Solid Bodies, we have an imported uh, body, which is fantastic. Um, now, there's a couple like caveats. So... It is a solid body in SolidWorks. We can do a lot of interesting things with it. We can, um, you know, cut a cross section through it and we can actually see, you know, the bounded edges on there. But it does not work exactly like how you traditionally work with a solid body. So let me show you an example. Uh, let's just pick a plane. How about this one here, the, the top plane? So, uh, let's say we wanted to just put a hole through the surface. So, Kind of easy to do, right? We're going to um, maybe come up here. We're going to want to put in a circle. Now, this actually um, selected some of the triangles, right? You see all these triangles in here as like uh, anchor points. So I'm going to um, just remove these references real quick. And um, this was already pre-aligned on the, on the plane there. So pretty easy for us to go in here. And we'll just kind of measure from the origin. Uh, let's say we like that just 22 millimeters up, just for sanity. And kind of pick a number. How about 18? Um, perfect. Now, in a normal world, if we wanted to cut a hole through this guy, uh, let's say we want to cut it through both sides, just to make it easy, through all both, and we go, okay. But boom, here we are. We got an error. It says, hey, you can't create this because we can't merge mesh geometry to regular geometry. 
Like, what the heck, right? That's pretty much the whole point of us opening it into SolidWorks. Well, don't fear. There is a workflow. Uh, just not a lot of folks know about it. That's what I'm going to show you today. So we'll leave that sketch. All right. So we've got a nice sketch. It's exactly where we want it. Now, um, we're going to work in SolidWorks with Boolean actions. So we're actually going to create uh, like a, a body. In this case, it's going to be like a cylinder that's going to pierce the outside of the walls. And then we're going to convert that to a mesh, and then we're going to remove that from our part. So it's a couple extra steps to do something simple, um, but it does allow us to work with this STL data right into SOLIDWORKS, and it makes it relatively straightforward. So uh, let's say we get this guy. We'll go ahead and extrude it. So maybe we'll do it from the mid-plane. We'll just kind of pull it out. All right, that looks good. Now, if you left merge result checked here, and you go to do this, you're going to get that same error. Hey, you can't combine these guys. So, all right, no problem. We'll unmerge it. Now we've got two bodies, right? So if we were to look over here, um, we can see that we got two bodies. Uh, maybe I'll change the color of this one for us so that we can just see it looking a little different. All right, perfect. Now we've got these two bodies. They're clearly intersecting, uh, but they're totally separate. So we're going to go into that mesh modeling tab. Remember we talked about that a moment ago. And we're going to take that cylinder, which is a SolidWorks normal solid. You'll notice it doesn't have this little symbol in the corner. That means that this is a mesh solid, and right now we've got a, a regular solid. So we're going to convert that to a mesh body. So when we do that, we can choose the number of triangles on there. We want it to look pretty round, so we're just going to make it have a really super fine mesh on there. No problem. We'll say, okay. So now we've got two mesh bodies here. Once you've got that, it makes things really easy. So now we can combine the parts. We could add them. We could subtract them. We could just save what's in common. In our case, we're going to subtract. So... We're going to select our um, main dome there as the main body, and we're going to select this cylinder here as the body we're going to subtract. And we say OK, and there we go. Now we've got our hole in our part exactly where we wanted it. So uh, if you're just looking to do relatively straightforward things with the mesh data, you can do that. You will notice there's actually a number of different features up here. We'll get into these in some other videos, but we can cut with surfaces. We can create services off the mesh, we can put in split lines. There's quite a lot of things that you can do in SOLIDWORKS uh, that you were unable to do in previous versions. So, you know, if we zoom in here, when I turn that on, you'll see those triangles are there, all that mesh is there. And this, you know, cross section that we cut through, it's got its own triangle. So um, it's kind of a different workflow in SOLIDWORKS, but uh, it definitely allows you to work with data, whether that comes out of a 3D scanner or somebody else's CAD system and you've just got an STL to work with, this is a great way to do it. All right, I hope that was helpful. Thanks, guys.